good evening and by good evening i also mean good afternoon because i'm recording this on different times than the other guys are going to be recording this it's nighttime for me but that doesn't really matter uh our english seminar uh today is on edgar and edmund uh by me lucas ellis and rob so let's get started so question and thesis evaluate the motivation of edmund and the play's presentation of morality in uh in light of the acts rapidly changing events so to start off uh we understand that edmund is portrayed as the malicious antagonist to the side plot of the play um he deceives his father deceives his brother uh probably kills a lot of people or a couple people and it's all um it's all to basically for power it's all for recognition um things like that uh of course the audience understands that he is a is a, a malicious character he's a cruel character a cruel brother a cruel son uh and of course you would be right however you could also see that if you think about it through edmund's point of view and how this how the play portrays edmund and how it introduces the reasons for why edmund does what he does throughout the play we can feel a sense of empathy towards edmund uh empathy or sympathy really depending on your life story and how you how you were raised uh but this is basically because um we'll just move on here yeah this is basically because uh as a kid and growing up we come to the realization uh rather through the text or implications in the text or in the play uh that that's gonna happen a lot uh in the play that basically show that edmund isn't really treated uh the best uh as a son and isn't really treated the best as a brother um because of course he's a bastard son he's unnatural if you want to use that term which is very is a very important term within the play he's unnatural compared to his natural legitimate brother and for that he's treated differently uh we understand that he doesn't have there's no recognition towards him there's no recognition no praise he doesn't feel that there's any loyalty for him uh growing up and that's why he does what he does uh and it's also mainly based off of like his his ideology the machiavellian ideology which as we know is basically uh the ends always justify the means uh and based off of your opinion you'll do anything to get to your success um and of course anything as in literally betraying your own family uh based off the simple justification that you, they didn't treat you right um so th these questions that i want to kind of ask uh the audience do the ends justify the means is blood really thicker than water of course do the ends justify the means um i believe that that is the case in some sense in this sense i don't believe so but again from edmund's point of view of course it does because he believes that he deserves he deserves the recognition and the loyalty that he never got as a child and he wants to do anything he can to get to his his goal which is as we said his recognition his loyalty all that all that stuff next is his blood really thicker than water um basically i would say no my personal opinion um and that's because we know of course that he betrays his uh, he betrays his dad he betrays his brother um i guess you could also say he betrays the two women that are in love with him but that's not really his family um and we could also see rob's going to go over it uh later on how this how this kind of relates to the godfather in the sense that uh it's a mob movie so there is a lot of machiavellian ideology within the movie and of course, Edmund is a very Machiavellian character. Uh, so my answer to that is no, blood is not really thicker than water uh, for the simple reason that it's not family. It's not family that makes loyalty. It's loyalty that makes family at the end of the day. So that's very important to, to remember. So we're going to be looking at now the parallel between the brothers. Um, we can see that from the beginning to the end of the play, Edgar and Edmund completely kind of change roles from how they're first introduced uh in the play so first we'll talk about um we'll talk about edmund uh we'll actually we'll, we'll start from the beginning we'll go to the end 
how it is in the how it is in the PowerPoint. So as we know, Edmund feels no remorse uh, for his brother, uh, no remorse that his brother has to be banished. He doesn't care because he wants to do anything he can so that he is seen as the natural son, which as we know, halfway throughout the the play, um, Gloucester actually praises Edmund and calls him a natural son. Uh, that's somewhere in, uh, in the middle of the play. And that kind of just shows that Edmund did all this for the recognition of his father, and later on, that recognition turns into just plain old power, uh, which of course is his downfall. Uh, we also know that uh, he's very deceitful. Um, he has the stereotypical Machiavellian ideology. Now, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, not going to say it's a good thing, it's just a thing. Um, Edgar, of course, is very easy to deceive. Uh, I put deceit there by accident, but it's deceive. Uh, he sees no wrong in people, um, and he sees no wrong in people that he believes are family. He believes that he can trust. He tries to avoid conflict at all costs. Now, we don't really know that for certain in the beginning. However, it is quite implied because he tries at all costs to avoid any conflict with his father when Edmund lies to him and tells him his father's looking for him to kill him or banish him. He just kind of leaves. Because he doesn't want any any trouble with his father. And I would call it the peacemaker ideology. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, by the end, of course, uh, Edmund realizes that the error of his ways uh, and tries to reconcile with his brother. Uh, tries to help, tries to basically help uh, find Cordelia and King Lear. Tries to send a messenger out. Um, and of course, it's kind of fishy because he does this after Edgar punctures him or wounds him. Uh, so it could be argued that it's because he is just trying to kind of get away with it and trying to make sure that he stays alive, which of course would be part of the Machiavellian ideology. So you can see that either way. Uh, and of course we have Edgar. Edgar becomes quite deceitful himself. Uh, he pretends to be two different people. He pretends to be the crazy character i forget the name of the crazy character uh who leads his father to the cliff and then he pretends to be the other man who finds his father at the bottom of the cliff i'll put air quotes for cliff um he also not only kills his own brother out of revenge uh for all the hardships that he's caused him and his father but kills oswald for basically threatening his father for trying to take that uh that little bag i believe or satchel or whatever you want to call it so of course it's out of justful means but He's still taking the lives of others. Uh, and now we're going to move on to uh, the secondary sources uh, with Lucas. So, thank you, Lucas. Motivation of Edmund. Edmund commits some heinous acts throughout the play. The betrayal of his father, his plot to kill one of the women who love him, and so on. However, though his actions perceived him as an antagonist, his malicious intent can be easily justified. Based on Ed Edmund's beliefs, um, he will do anything to achieve his goals. Uh, however, uh, his ambition is interesting insofar as it reflects not only a thirst for land and power, but also a desire for the recognition denied to him uh, by his status as a bastard. Again, based off of the Machiavellian ideology, deceit and the murder of innocence was normal and effective in politics. Edmund believes this strongly. A character analysis of the villains of King Lear states Edmund's main personality trait is his captivity for duplicity. He schemes against his against both his father and his half-brother, Edgar. We are told of his status as Glo uh, Glochester's illegitimate son at the beginning of Act 1, Scene 1, and in Act 1, Scene 2. It is basically brought up all throughout the play. We are given a clear picture of the resentment that Edmund feels at not being his father's legitimate heir. Shakespeare makes his manipulative nature completely unambiguous, showing Edmund's tricking, Edmund tricking Glochester into thinking that Edgar is plotting against him. Pouring scorn on Glochester's superstitious fears about the breakdown of society and taking advantage of the unwitting Edgar by telling him that his father has turned against him. It is, simply, or it is simple to see that Edmund has had a rough life. Although uh, all throughout he has been ostracized and essentially bullied, for being the illegitimate son. However, his Machiavellian ideology 
essentially states that he is permiss he is permissible to do these heinous acts. Parallel between brothers. To the untrained eye, Edmund can easily be regarded as a villain of this story. However, of all the play's villains, Edmund is the most complex and sympathetic. He is he is consummate he is a consummate schemer, a Machiavellian character eager to seize any opportunity and willing to do anything to achieve his goals. An article, um, the malignant or the malignant scapegoats of King Lear focuses on the conversion between Edgar and Edmund during Act Five. Why Edmund is suddenly seized with the desire to do good is a tantalizing and mysterious question. Why should the discovery that he has loved, uh, that he was loved by two of the worst harridans ever created for the stage, make him wish to do good rather than evil? His ostensible motive is passing strange. Yet Edmund was beloved. That was on line two thirty eight. Yet is glossed as despite all, which lends it the form of a motive for doing good. Edmund was objectively evil. However, during his dying breaths, he yearns to be virtuous. He wants to do good rather than evil. However, Edmund's move uh, toward virtue is a hideous absurdity, a cruelly meaningless and completely inconsequential gesture, as he fails to save the people he was trying to save. Furthermore, a look into an article says Edmund's delay in revoking his order for the death of Cordelia and Lear brings on the catastrophe caused by his slow and un unsuccessful effort to repent before his own death. It illustrates Orthodox Elizabethan doctrine on the forgiveness of sins. Edmund's relations with Edgar, Glowchester, and especially Gorne uh, Gon Goneril and Regan are important to in preparing for his personal climax, his aborted perpety, which necessitates consideration of the complex bearing of the parallel plots on each uh, other. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Edgar, originally a man who avoided conflict and turned a blind eye to the problems within his family, killing Oswald and sifting through his clothes, uh, clothing, finding the letter the steward was carrying. On the same article, the student writes, Oswald's body supplies the occasion for further reflection on death by Edgar, who is rifling through Oswald's pockets, is performing by his own description a symbolic alternative to ripping, ripping open his body to reveal the corruption at his heart. The innocent Edgar has turned to the point of revenge, and he seeks the blood of his brother. Connection to a work of literature, Edmund versus Elijah, Three Day Road. In Three Day Road, Elijah is Xavier's best friend and the antagonist in the novel. When Elijah was a young boy, his mother passed away due to a coughing sickness. Elijah then went on to live at a residential school with nuns. And as the story progresses, Elijah is brainwashed by the war and has a terrible morphine addiction. This leads him to scalp his enemies, which he learns from the French soldiers. And he starts to have a passion for blood as he even drinks the, from the dead bodies that he has killed. Near the end of the novel, Elijah kills two more important characters, Grey Eyes and Lieutenant Breach. Elijah then tries to kill Xavier too, but Xavier is a Wendigo killer and he uses his Monsieur rifle to strangle Elijah. And I quote, the next morning after stand two, Thompson approaches Elijah and me. He talks to both of us, but his words are for Elijah. What do you think of the last day's whiskey, Jack? He asked, lighting a cigarette, exhaling, and looking at the sky. I could see that Elijah knows exactly what Thompson's saying. And Thompson's asking if Elijah likes killing. Elijah considers it for a moment and he says, it's in my blood. When Edmund sees both Gunnarill and Regan have died for him, he whispers, and I quote, yet yeah, Edmund was beloved. 5.3, page 238. After this statement, he comes to realize and he admits to having Cordelia's death. This quote represents a change in his character by emphasizing knowing what he did was wrong and sinful. These two quotes create a change in the characters of Edmund and Elijah, and it's very similar. Edmund realizes what he did wrong and what was sinful and he leads to change for the better. And for Elijah, he realizes what, who he is as a person and he changes to full Wendigo. Elijah and Edmund are alike in many ways and they both started life, started life somewhat with a disadvantage. Edmund for being Glo Glocuster's uh, younger and legitimate son, he represents or resents the fact that the accident of his birth 
has deprived him of legal status. And when Elijah was a young boy, his mother passed away due to a coughing sickness, causing Elijah to live at a residential school and then go to war. They are both motivated because they grew up with no parental figure to look up to. And Edmund grew up with his dad hating on him because he is illegitimate. At the end of both books, Elijah and Edmund both got killed by, or for their, for the actions by a loved one. And Elijah kills two important characters, Grey Eyes and Lieutenant Breach, and he tries to kill Xavier too. Edmund is fatally wounded in the duel with Edgar and he dies after confessing his sins. So modern media connection of Edmund and the Godfather. Edmund's ideology is very similar to a mafia mindset and ideology. He believes that the ends always justify the means and doesn't matter what you have to do to defeat what's in your way as long as you succeed. And as long as you succeed in the end, that's all that matters. And, and that's the end goal. In the, in the Godfather, the idea is very similar. Family would betray family if the price is large enough. In both Godfather and King Lear, it's Fredo who believes um, Michael, even though Michael trusted him with his casino. This ends up causing Michael pain and grief because he'll end up having to kill his own brother for betraying him, which Edgar does in King Lear. In The Godfather, Michael Corleone states, you know what the saddest thing about betrayal is? It never comes from the family. It never comes from an enemy. Sorry. To both of these sisters, I have sworn my love, each jealous of the other, a stone, are of the adder. Act 5, scene 5. Um, Edmund says this, and um, he, he plays Lear's eldest daughters, Regan and Gunnar Real, um, against each other. And he, he teaches them or shows them that, um, that to believe that he loves them and causing them to turn on each other, resulting in their eventual deaths. Um, alongside um, Edmund, a gunner reel represents the place theme in children turning against their fathers or family, which is the same idea of Michael and the Godfather going against your family and that that ends justify the means if it doesn't matter um, what you have to do that defeats in your, to defeat in your way as long as you succeed in the end. And those two quotes go hand in hand with the same idea and theme of it doesn't really matter what's, what's in your way, who's in your way. Um, if someone was your, if someone was part of your family and they planned on going against you the whole time, does it really make them your family? But no, it makes them your enemy. Thank you. Okay, so I'll be doing a, a media comparison. So in this case, I'll be comparing Edmund from uh, King Lear to Walter White from Breaking Bad. Um, so to begin, they both start at a disadvantage that leads them to commit these immoral acts. So um, in Edmund's case, he was at the bottom of the wheel, wheel of fortune and was considered uh, the bastard child or the illegitimate son. Um, so as this quote here, thou, thou nature art my goddess. So he bemoans over the fact that um, his status as the bastard child prevents him from having claim to his father's title and having claimed to wealth. Uh, and similarly, Walter uh, White was a dying chemistry teacher with terminal lung cancer um, in desperate need to pay for his cancer treatments, but while leaving his family um, in a good pos position financially after he dies. So this leads uh, them com to commit a moral act. So Edmund um, begins with deceiving Edgar into fleeing the country. Um, but his power is what ultimately uh, leads King Lear and Cordelia to being sentenced to death and Cordelia dying. Um, and then Walter White uh, began manufacturing meth in order to pay for these cancer treatments, which led him on to a long line of uh, killing, into killing people um, and eventually yeah, generally just killing people and uh, transporting very illegal drugs uh, all around the country. So um, despite having established success, they, already, they, they still want more. So Edmund was already, uh, he already deceived his brother um, and was on the good side of his father uh, and wasn't really considered the illegitimate son anymore because he was in position to uh, attain the wealth and obtain his father's title. But he wanted more. He was still contemplating um, 
you know, which sister would bring him more, um, bring him more prosperity and more power. Um, so as this quote here, which of them shall I take? Neither can be a joy to both of them alive. So this shows his ambition. He still uh, really wants more, uh, despite already being respected and already obtaining, um, already having success in what he eventually or earlier on planned to do, which was to uh, be respected and be the son whom the father uh, admired more. And then Walter, despite already um, obtaining more than enough wealth to support his family and pay for his cancer treatments, um, he still wanted to continue to cook. This is because he, li he liked being enjoyed, he liked being needed um, and appreciated, which he wasn't very used to as a chemistry teacher in the United States. So um, despite having the money, uh, he still continued to go down this dark path and further contribute to his destruction. Um, yeah, so, and then their overly ambitious personalities were at the expense of others. So Edmund eventually sentenced King Lear and Cordelia to death, um, which actually killed Cordelia and led Lear to kill himself because of the broken heart. And he did this because he thought, he kind of viewed them as a threat to his power. Uh, Lear was once a leader and Cordelia was the one who planned to uh, have a war against England. And then also, um, Walt's brother-in-law, Hank, was a victim of uh, Walt's ambition is because uh, Jesse, who was Walt's original partner, uh, was working with Hank in order to take down um, Walter White. Um, and Walter, who originally thought that he would only be seeing uh, Jesse, didn't even know that Hank was really involved in this plot to uh, stop his drug operation, hired Hitman in order to kill Jesse. But once he saw Hank uh, there to arrest him, he kind of canceled the Hitman, but the Hitman got, wrong, got the wrong message. And Hank ended up losing his life as a result. Um, and then also, despite all the wrongs they've done, they still try to reverse some of their actions and they show remorse. So Edmund, um, he admits that all the things he'd been charged with, uh, that all kind of add up to the treason charge that Alvin would charge him with. Um, he admit, he admitted that all those things he had done and that he was wrong for it, which he hadn't admitted. He hadn't been any, he had done anything wrong the entire play until this point. Um, this quote, what well, you've charged me with that I had done and more, much more, the time will bring it out. And then also when uh, Edmund was wounded and he's, uh, as a quote here, panting for life, uh, he still wants to do some good despite his own nature, despite his own wrongdoings. Um, and he tries to help find Cordelia um, when, we're going, when people forgot that Cordelia was also sentenced to death and uh, could be hanged any moment. And then also when Walter was arrested by Hank and saw the hitmen coming up to, I guess, kill Jesse, but they also saw Hank there, uh, he yells from the cop car um, in an attempt to warn Hank and warn him of the hitmen. But obviously it's too late and Hank doesn't listen to Walt um, and Hank ends up losing his life and Walter is actually the one who takes it the hardest. He ends up crying in the middle of the desert and uh, kind of questions why he had done all this drug operation uh, activity in the first place. Um, so as a byproduct of their ambitions, they're left with nothing. So Walt ultimately, uh, or sorry, Edmund is at the bottom of the wheel of fortune, uh, left with no money and is inevitably dies. Uh, and the whole reason he did in the first place was to get to the top of the wheel of fortune, which he already had because of his ambition to kind of let him with nothing or let him to have nothing. And Walter's hated by his family and the whole reason he did this whole a methamphetamine operation in the first place was to be, uh, I guess, loved by his family when they see all this wealth and all the money they're left with. But the family inevitably knows about his drug operation, doesn't want any of his drug money. And Walt dies alone uh, with no one who really loves him. So um, now comparing a uh, more piece of literature comparison. So I'll be comparing Edmund from King Lear to Macbeth from another Shakespearean uh, iconic play. Um, Macbeth. Um, so another like so how they're similar is their ambition, despite already being respected, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Edmund already deceived Edgar and was already loved by his father, was in a good position to obtain wealth. Um, he actually took his father's position, so we didn't really need to uh, plot anything regarding the sisters. But he still wants more power, so he decides to uh, consider which sister, to, like which sister he should marry that would bring him the most power and most wealth. Um, and also, Macbeth, 
uh, his ambition. He was already a respected soldier. The king loved him. He was a war, he was a war veteran, I guess, uh, winning all the battles he took part in. Um, but this quote here, stars, hide your fires, let not light see my black and deep desires. So um, this was shortly after he uh, was told of the witches or the witch's prophecy was kind of uh, put in his mind, I guess. And um, his ambitions heightened by this prophecy because he's eventually uh, made Thane of Cordor and he kind of believes that this prophecy might come true. So it kind of give, makes him more eager to become king, which with the, obviously with the help of his ambition supplemented with Lady Macbeth's ambition is what leads him to commit all these murders and uh, contribute to his own destruction. Or his ambition contributed to his own destruction, similar to Edmund. And also, but there's signs of humanity. So uh, like I mentioned before, Edmund admitting that uh, being charged with treason was correct, all the things he had done. And he listed all the things that he had done and that all the things Albany um, charged him with were true. And he attempts to find Cordelia despite being the one to sentence her to death. Um, showing that he was trying to do some good and try to make some good out of a bad one which he created. <laughs> and then Macbeth with the blood. So the blood is what symbolizes guilt. So uh, Macbeth with this quote, I am in blood stepped in so far that I should wait no more. Returning were as tedious as a uh, goer. So what this kind of means is uh, this was right after Macbeth was haunted by Banco's ghost. And he kind of admits that he's gone too far. He's the guilt has consumed him to such an extent that uh, there's no point in changing his fate because uh, he's already kind of contributed to his own destruction. He wouldn't even want to do, try to reverse these acts. He just kind of wants to be punished for them. And uh, yeah, his guilt is ultimately just taken over and he really doesn't want to do this anymore. Um, and that is it. Thank you. All right, and we're back to me. So in conclusion, uh, we can see, the audience can see, that Edmund does indeed betray and lie to many people throughout the throughout the play uh, who he earns the trust of. Um, in his head, of course, this seems justified because of the mistreatment that he was given through his whole childhood or uh, teenagehood or however you want to put it, as he was raised, basically. Uh, by being the bastard son, by feeling inferior to Edgar, who was the natural-born, legitimate son. Um, we know that, of course, he has the Machiavellian ideology, which is um, ends justify the means at all costs. Um, at all costs, basically, you can do whatever you have to do as long as you get to your goal, which, as we know, Edmund's goal at the end was recognition and power. Um, we also know that Edgar and Edmund both become basically the opposites of what they were from the beginning of the play to the end of the play. Uh, end of the play, uh, Edmund, of course, goes from the deceitful, um, deceitful, malicious character who does everything he can to get to his get his power, uh, get the trust from others, uh, the Machiavellian ideology, as we've talked about this whole uh, presentation. And he becomes, by the end, a repentance seeker. Um, he basically tries to repent for his actions, whether that be out of actual reflection or just to stay alive. Of course, we don't know. You can argue both sides. Uh, of course, we have Edgar, who goes from a gullible peacemaker who is easily deceived um, and would basically never hurt a fly, uh, tries to avoid conflict at all costs. And by the end of the play, he becomes the justice seeker, as I put. Um, he's still kind of the same. However, uh, when push comes to shove, he'll basically kill who he has to if he has to protect the people that he loves, like his father when he killed Oswald, uh, or even his brother out of revenge and justice for the, um, I guess, betrayal that his brother did uh, show onto him and Gloucester. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, thank you for listening to this presentation. That's all we're excited. And yeah, peace.